This is our last week in the season of Lent. For the last six weeks, we have been exploring the theme of being hopeful in a weary world by focusing on a different topic each week from our faith tradition that brings hope. Today, our topic is authenticity as it relates to the story of Jesus and how that brings hope. Our focus text for this week comes from Matthew's Gospel. Jesus says, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. Jesus says, You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. In this text, you are invited to remember that you are salt and you are light. If you have been connected to a church for at least well, for some time, or if you read or listen to the Bible, you've probably heard this metaphor before, that you are salt, you are light. While you may have heard this before, have you ever been inspired by it? After reading this passage, have you ever walked away going, Oh, of course! Yeah, I'm salt! N now my life makes so much more sense. Why did I never think about that before? Thank you, Jesus! Hey, everybody, I'm salt! <laughs> I, I, I don't think that's true. I mean, of course you haven't done this. That has never happened to anyone. Nonetheless, Jesus uses these simple metaphors of salt and light to make some very powerful claims. Unfortunately, these, these metaphors, they don't work for most of us. So maybe we need to encounter them and experience them with more than just our ears. So I'm going to focus on, on just one of them, and, and I have an idea for how we can experience this maybe a little bit differently, but I have to change locations. One second. Okay, welcome to the kitchen. I got some salt, I got a cookie, got a glass of water. I'm gonna flag Matt down in just a second, but salt, the sugary cookie here, <laughs> That's a good kind of sugar. And I'm gonna put some in this water. Switch that around. Perfect. And I need to grab Matt. Hey, Matt. Matt, you out there? Matt. Yeah. Come on here real quick. All right. I, I was got... just, you know, walking by. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Can you help me really quick for this video segment that I'm doing for for the message? It involves cookies. Yes. I do. I have a cookie here for you. Ooh. It is a, um, a molasses sugar cookie. Ooh. Do you, is it, you my like My grandma this? used to make those. They're Ex my favorite. Excellent. All right. So, I consider myself a connoisseur okay. of molasses, especially molasses crinkles. <laughs> Good. Just Good. put bread in the basket and kept it nice and moist. That, but then the bread would become hard. That, that, that's neither here nor there. That's great. Just, just take a bite. Tell me what you think. Ooh, you, big bite or little bite? You take a big one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what did you put I, in these? A special ingredient. What? Chad? That, that's, that's not sugar, that's salt. I love, oh. How do you like it? Well, if no. I was a deer, I'd be happy to all right, lick it. All right, all right, all right, all right, here, here, here. That's so much salt. Cleanse your palate, cleanse Ugh. your palate. <laughs> yeah. Chad. I put salt. Kill me here? No, I put salt in that too. So this was good. <coughs> this is good. This was what I wanted to show people because okay. I'm always impressed by not walking by the kitchen anymore. Hold on, just a little bit of salt, a little bit. I didn't put that much in this, but a little bit of salt makes a huge difference. You notice it mm -hmm. when you experience it, when you encounter mm -hmm. it. It impacts you, right? <coughs> would you say that's true? I would. I would. I would say that is a true statement. 
then there we go. <laughs> and Jesus uses this as a metaphor for a very good reason. Thank you for helping me make the point, Matt. Why did you set the camera up? This was my bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fun to do stuff with Matt. Ho hopefully you're able to see this metaphor in just a, a slightly different way. A and we'll come back to that in, in just a little bit. But, but first, well, once upon a time, in communities around the world, it was pretty much decided what you would do with your life, where you would live, how wealthy you would be, who you would marry. Th there are still some places like that today, but not very many. If you were born, for example, a child of a baker in medieval Europe, guess what? You would be a baker too. There really was no other option for you. If you were born into the peasant class, you would remain a peasant. There was no upward mobility. There's a history of this in our own country as well. Back in the day, a long time ago, kids inherited the lifestyle and occupations of their parents to a large degree kids also inherited the faith tradition of their parents as well. If you were born into a Catholic home, you would always be a Catholic. Same thing if you were born into a Muslim family. In this kind of environment, the question, who are you? Well, that's really not a question at all. Who are you? Well, you are who your family is. What they do is what you will do. You are whatever social class you are born into. You are whatever faith tradition that you inherit. Now, obviously, this is not the case today. We have choices. Kids are told from a very early age that you can be and do whatever you want to be and do. And I think it's great to have options, but it makes life a little bit more complex now because nothing is clear. <laughs> right now, there is a, uh, an unwritten rule for middle and upper middle class parents raising kids in this environment, which says this, thou shall give thy children every experience and opportunity that can be afforded and fit into thy schedule so that thy children can figure out who they are. <laughs> you wanna play hockey? All right. We'll find the money to get you the gear, and we'll clear our evening and weekend schedule for the foreseeable future to drive you to practice and games. Oh, you figured out that you don't like skating. All right, throw your hockey bag in the corner of the garage. Want to try golf? Done. Here are some clubs. Not your thing? Throw them with the hockey stuff. Photography? Great. Boring? Uh, all right. Drone flying? Well, we can put you into a robotics at school. Oh, you don't like building stuff. Journalism? Lacrosse? No? No? A chemistry set. STEM classes are important. No? Music? Yes, music, awesome. What do you want to play? Here's a drum set. No? Okay, put it with the rest of the stuff in the garage. We'll sell it during the spring rummage sale for pennies on the dollar, but it's okay because you are figuring out who you are. Speaking of, do you know what you want to do with your life? No? What? What do you mean that you don't know? Do you know how much time and money that we've spent trying to help you figure that out? <laughs> It's a little bit comical and ironic how much money and time is invested in figuring out identity because just when you think you have everything figured out, life changes everything. Over the past two years of this pandemic, I have listened to so many educators say things like this. I thought I was a good teacher. I thought this would be my career. I thought that teaching is what I was supposed to do, but I can't do it anymore. An acquaintance of mine from years ago was a hardcore athlete until he hurt his back. Everything he thought made him unique was tied to running. His friends, his work, even his spiritual practice was all tied to running. With all of that gone, what was left? He struggled with this. When marriages break up, it's not just the pain of losing someone you once loved, it, it's also 
the devastating loss of who you had become, a wife, a husband, part of a couple. It can feel vulnerable and awkward to walk around without that identity. But who am I now, actually? There, there's also the loss of the future that your identity was headed towards, the, the house, the kids, the security of growing old with that partner. People who are completely wrapped into their work talk about feeling useless, unworthy, even embarrassed or humiliated when they lose their job, even to retirement, because they can no longer point to an identity that they had wrapped themselves up in, up in what they did. I mean, this is the reality of life, though. Those things that give us a sense of identity, a sense of purpose, a sense of joy, a sense of accomplishment, we eventually lose those things. Time takes them. Injury takes them. The brokenness of life takes them. Death takes them. And if this is just the reality of life, then, well, where in the world do we find hope? Jesus tells his followers that they are salt, that they are light. Not that they will be salt and will be light, but that they are salt and light. They will bring out the kingdom of God, the God flavors and the God colors in life. The story of our faith teaches us that you are more than what you're able to do, that you are more than your roles, that you are more than your affiliations, that you are more than those things that you tie yourself to that you will unfortunately eventually lose. When you can no longer drive, when you can no longer care for yourself, when you are no longer married, when you are no longer working, when you are no longer able to remember the name of your loved ones, when you don't make the grade, when you don't make the team, when you are turned down for a promotion, when you lose the respect of others, when everything around you changes, and when time takes everything from you, we remember that we are salt and that we are light. And that does not change. You are a child of God. That is who you are. You radiate God's love and grace and impact the lives of those who you interact with on a daily basis. You can't lose that because it is not tied to your ability. It's not tied to your role. It's not tied to your affiliation. Salt and light, it just simply is. That is your authentic self. It's who you were created to be. That is at the heart of the Christian story that helps us to form a positive identity that doesn't change as time changes everything else around us. And that is what we latch on today. That can give us hope in a weary world. Thanks be to God for that. Amen. Having listened to the reflection on authenticity, our final reflection in our Lenten series, Hopeful in a Weary World, here are a couple reflection questions to help you go deeper into the story of your faith. We would, I would encourage you to do these again with a partner or simply journal, with, journal about them on your own. Question number one, where does your identity come from? Or another way of saying this, what are those things that you tie your reason to being to, your reason for existing? And question number two, what if you were to lose those things? Does your identity as a child of God, as salt and light that bring out the flavors and colors of God's kingdom, give you hope? Do these metaphors resonate with you?